Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar, run through the weather warnings and we have numerous yellow warnings over the coming days for generally pretty unsettled weather. We actually have Storm Fergus moving through at the moment. Again, nowhere near as intense as some of the storms we saw in the autumn, but still going to bring some very gusty winds in western areas, especially for the Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales, and for southwest England through this evening into the overnight hours. As I said, over the coming days, it's going to be pretty unsettled, as we'll see on the latest UKV, with plenty of rain around. But with the winds coming generally in from the west, it is going to be fairly mild. So yes, not the greatest conditions, but we're not going to be dealing with any snow or ice or frost in the next few days. However, towards the end of the week, we are going to see high pressure start to build in, which will bring the risk of frost and fog. The models do actually have some really warm upper air temperatures, but it's unlikely to be reflected at the surface because we're going to probably, especially for southern areas, see an inversion where the temperatures at the surface are much cooler than what they would, uh, than what you'd expect given the upper air temperatures. Now that is looking likely to dominate the middle third of December really, all the way to around the 18th, 19th, 20th of December. So we're going to see a good period of drier weather. And after that, that is where we see massive uncertainty as we head towards the Christmas period. A lot of the models are showing that high pressure trying to ridge northwards, potentially developing northerly winds. Uh, at the moment, we're not seeing any major sustained cold spell, but we are definitely seeing some northerly blasts, especially from the GFS model, which does go out further than the other runs. Uh, today, actually, uh, the six o'clock run is showing pretty heavy snow overnight Christmas Day into Boxing Day. Again, it's right at the end of the extended range, but nevertheless just shows you the potential is there as we head towards the latter parts of December. So do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now if you start on the live radar you can see the weather fronts associated with Storm Fergus are slowly clearing northwards and eastwards but the most intense winds are actually still much further westwards. You can see this sort of area of showers, that's the centre of the low of Storm Fergus and this is actually where we are seeing the strongest winds. So for much of England and Wales now the heavy rain has cleared, it did move through very quickly indeed only in a matter of a couple of hours but as we head into the evening and the overnight hours that's when we can actually see the strongest winds so many areas have cleared the heaviest rain at the moment especially for England and Wales but the strongest winds are still yet to come for northern areas north of England and Scotland we've still got some heavy rain associated with Storm Fergus's weather fronts and there is some highland snow again not too unusual for the time of year if we do put on the temperatures as around 3 p.m you can see it's pretty cool in the north that's pretty inevitable to the northern edge of the low further southwards though you can see it is actually incredibly mild 12 or 13 degrees across the far south a good five six seven degrees above average uh, for the time of year again if we put on the past 24 hour precipitation you'll be able to see we've seen a lot of rain of course uh with storm elin yesterday and with storm fergus today again not the most intense systems but nevertheless we can see where we've seen a lot of wide rain pretty much everywhere has seen some moderate rainfall the heaviest rain really across northern ireland and up to northwest england and these areas have got weather warnings issued and if we do have a look at the wind gusts uh, wind speeds as well again these are sustained wind speeds, not wind gusts. Of course, wind gusts are going to be stronger. You can see where the strongest winds are at the moment across parts of the Republic of Ireland here. We're looking at 70, maybe 80 mile per hour gusts in places. And that is going to spread slowly eastwards, weakening as it does, but slowly eastwards over the coming hours. Now, to look at the latest weather warnings, we've got numerous rain warnings issued at the moment. We've got this rain warning issued for northwest England. Again, probably the most impactful warning here because of the amount of rain we've seen over the past 24 hours already. It comes into force in a couple hours time and expires at 3 a.m. And again, it's for the occluded front from uh, from Storm Fergus. Again here, heavy rain and showers, 50 to 20 millimetres, maybe 30 to 40 millimetres in places. Uh, a similar warning up towards uh, nor uh, southwest Scotland here, expires at 11pm tonight, 10 to 15 millimetres in a few hours, perhaps 25 to 30 millimetres uh, overall. Eastern Scotland and into northern Scotland, the same uh, warning issued here. 
Uh, and you can see it's from midday today until 9pm this evening. So some of these warnings are expiring only a matter of you know, three to six hours time. 50 to 30 millimetres for much of the area with 40 millimetres. So this is the rain we're seeing at the moment. Into tomorrow, we've still got that warning we saw across northwest England again. Going to be pretty impactful there. And then we've got another warning issued for much of eastern Scotland for Tuesday into Wednesday from 9am until 3am. Persistent rainfall through Tuesday into early Wednesday may lead to some flooding on roads. Again, low pressure sliding through. And as the easterly wind comes on on the northern edge of the low, we can see lots of rain and persistent showers feeding in off the North Sea. Similar pattern what we see when we see heavy snowfall in these areas, but this falling as rain with a milder sector. Again, 15 to 30 millimetres, maybe 50 to 75 millimetres. There is even the possibility of seeing an amber warning issued for this. You can see it is pretty high impact, but very low likelihood because of how far away it is. A couple of days uh, doesn't sound lots, but when it comes to the short range models uh, and the sort of events where it can change very quickly, it is a good while away. And then they said that warning carries on into Wednesday. But for many, as we head towards Wednesday, Thursday, it is actually going to be settling down. Now, if you look at the latest UKV, you can see the weather front associated with Storm Fergus moving through very quickly for many areas through this afternoon. Rain continuing across much of Scotland, but slowly expiring away. And you can see that we've got the occluded front and the showers around the central low moving through this evening through northern and northwestern England. While well, we've got that weather warning, could be really intense there for a few hours with strong gusty winds moving in as well. Overnight into Monday, so it's going to be pretty dry. Before we do start seeing more showers moving in from the west for Monday afternoon, but for most, it's actually a pretty dry and pleasant day. Pretty mild as well, with generally warmer upper air temperatures. Beyond that, through Monday night, we start to see those showers and bands of rain moving in from the west. It's going to give another widespread soaking overnight into Tuesday, but for most, the rainfall is falling overnight, so it shouldn't be too impactful. Tuesday afternoon, plenty of showers around as we are now under another area of low pressure. And then as we progress into Wednesday, you can see the reason why we've got potentially a uh, warning for eastern Scotland there. As you can see, the, the rain just coming in from the east coast there, from the North Sea, pretty much for all of Tuesday there. And that is why there is uh, the yellow warning issued. Beyond that, as we head into Thursday and Friday, you can see the rain slowly subsiding. We do see another weather front move through on Thursday, but it's not too heavy. And then it generally starts to turn dry. Still a few showers in the north, but this is because higher pressure is building in. And you can see here at five, day five, the high pressure is extending in around 1,032 millibars into the southwest of England. Pretty high pressure indeed. And it's going to turn us much drier. And you can see the upper air temperatures are going to slowly turn much milder. Here initially it's it's actually pretty cold, but much warmer air masses just to our southwest, which is going to be moving in. But it's actually going to keep us pretty cold still at the surface. If you look at the two metre max temperatures this afternoon, it's pretty mild in the south, uh, 12 or 13 degrees, cooler further northwards. Monday, again, temperatures could get up to the 10 or 11 degree mark, slightly cooler as we are behind the cold front at this stage with in between weather systems, but still generally mild for the time of year. Colder though across Scotland. Into Tuesday, uh, again, generally fairly mild day, 9 to 11 degrees, cold, uh, cold further northwards, of course. And then as we head into Wednesday, turning chillier as we start to see cold air moving from the north, and you can see only 5 to 7 degrees, so back down towards average for the time of year on Wednesday. And then into Thursday, you could see a frost developing, but as we see that persistent rain uh, and cloud moving from the northwest, only four or five degrees in the afternoon so turning colder later this week but not massively cold just generally back towards average maybe a touch below average and then into friday again frost forming as we are in generally cold air uh, and with dry conditions prevailing but if you do have a look at the wind gusts just to finish off uh, to see storm fergus through this evening you can see pretty strong wind gusts are developing this evening especially for parts of the republic of ireland 70 80 miles per hour look possible but widely more likely 50 to 70 miles per hour as it does spread further inland through this evening so the wildest conditions for storm fergus are likely to be overnight tonight so might not look too bad at the moment but in the coming hours those winds are going to ramp up from the west and it's going to be a pretty stormy evening for many especially that northwestern quadrant we've got that rain warning not only are you going to be seeing the strong winds we're going to be seeing a lot of heavy squally rain as well now, if you look at the longer range, we start on the latest GFS. As I said, this actually does develop some snow in the long term. 
into the Christmas period. Again, I must emphasize, it's not a sustained blocked cold spell. It's not like a beast from the east or anything like that, but it's the sort of pattern where we see cold air move in and then a low pressure slide in and potentially give some snow on its leading edge. As we progress through, you can see generally westerly winds over the coming days, but eventually high pressure builds in by the end of this week, especially for Friday. It looks like it is dominating. It does stay over the top of us and does get uh, weakened by low pressures, it does get strained, but it does hold on. You can see pretty warm upper air temperatures, but especially towards the centre of the high further southwards, said there could be an inversion. If we do keep on the upper air temperatures here, I just want to show you how it does evolve. You can see generally though, cooler air eventually moves in, and as we head towards around the 20th of December, this is where we could start to see some northerly blasts. Again, I must emphasise, no sustained cold spell, but look at that, a really quite cold Arctic blast rise for the 20th into the 21st. Lasts a couple of days before getting moved away by some milder air, but then we see another northerly blast come in, just in time for Christmas, and then through Christmas Eve, uh, Christmas Day into Boxing Day, we see this low pressure slide through the cold air and potentially give us some snow. So the GFS does go much colder as we progress towards the latter parts of December. Not a sustained cold spell would be very up and down, pretty marginal as well, especially further southwards for any wintriness, but definitely a sort of eclectic mix where there would be uh, some very cold temperatures, some snow, sleet and rain all mixed in to the Christmas period. So again, not a sort of sustained cold spell, not a guaranteed white Christmas or anything, but pretty messy, but potentially pretty wintry as well. Again, something to keep an eye on. It definitely is looking like a very possible solution uh, as we progress into the latter part of December. Definitely much of the models and ensemble members are going below average and pretty cold, but we don't know how exactly it is going to evolve at this stage. Now, if you look at the GEM, if it only goes out to day 10 here, you can see westerly winds pushing in, high pressure builds in, and by the end of the run, we don't really get much beyond the high pressure staying over the top of us. It does get strained, and we do open the door to some stronger westerly winds and some fresher air masses at times, but really nothing particularly sustained here, just generally actually a pretty flat westerly with no real dominance from either high pressure or low pressure could go anywhere from here. So yeah, not giving us uh, any real particular insight into what the last sort of week or two of December could hold. Just need to keep a, set, a very close eye on it. GM has been fairly consistent with this, giving us no real signal, no real bias. It's all the end of its runs recently. If you compare to the ECMWF, again, westy winds continue to come in, high pressure builds in, very warm upper air temperatures from the ECMWF today, and right towards day 10, very similar to the GM, maybe slightly more amplification, but generally actually more of a flatter westerly with pretty uh, pretty cold air coming in at times, but nothing crazy, you know, cold enough for frost uh, potentially in a few wintry showers, but nowhere near as cold as the GFS's northerly blasts. Uh, are going um, and again would likely bring the milder air back in within a couple of days so we do need to keep a very close eye definitely is looking like there's scope for colder blasts colder periods or even maybe colder proper cold spells as we head towards the christmas period into new year but at this stage it is fairly speculative and there is no consistency from the models at all about what will uh, what that air, what that period of time will entail except that most of them are showing colder air masses moving in uh, or sort of being in and around uh, the British Isles. Now, if you finish by looking at the latest ensembles, the latest GFS shows this pretty well. You see generally hovering above and below average over the next sort of five days or so, as we do see generally westerly winds coming in colder and milder sectors but from around the 15th 16th so from around thursday friday time it goes pretty bone dry and it goes really quite mild with the upper air temperatures but as you see with the two meter temperatures in a minute especially for london further southwards uh, where we'll see an inversion take place pretty likely uh, temperatures are going to be really probably around average you can see though as we get to the 20th which is sort of the day 10 mark we see normally huge uncertainty we see a big drop it is looking highly likely that the high pressure moves away and we see fresh air moving in from the west or northwest but what happens after that is you know still really up in the air gfs ensembles today lots of runs going pretty cold and fairly unsettled as well with more precipitation spikes arriving looking sort of two three four degrees below average with some very cold runs appearing but i must say that there's no consistency here 
yes, the bias here, that sort of the trend is for below average, potentially wintry sort of air masses, but there's no consistency about how it will entail. Some runs will have full-blown northerly winds with massive blocking setups. Other runs like the GFS here just had a bit of a mid-Atlantic ridge. So it is still all up in the air, but there definitely is uh, a lot of runs showing generally a colder pattern as we progress towards the Christmas period. But yeah, way too early to say whether we'll see any proper colder weather or if there's any major prospects for a white Christmas. TB temperatures are said, look at that. We've got very warm upper air temperatures into the latter part of this week, but we see no bounce really from the two meters temperatures here, looking sort of five to eight degrees around average for the time of year. And there most likely will be frosts around as well, especially if that inversion really gets going. So yeah, even though very warm upper air temperatures are moving in, not actually going to be all too warm. And then there is a trending colder beyond that. Dew points after the next sort of few days actually going to be hovering around zero to five degrees so going to be much fresher air masses feeling colder feeling drier out there and again that does bring the risk of some winteriness especially in the longer term you see some of these dew points down to minus five to minus ten so that's proper arctic air moving in from some of the runs in the lead up to christmas but again it's from maybe a quarter to a third and again they're not all showing the same sort of pattern and if we do just look, have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, similar sort of pattern, not as bullish with the colder runs in the longer term, but still definitely a bit of a trend, a, a little bit of a bias towards colder runs here. But other than that, it's pretty much a very similar setup. Both the GFS and GM, uh, sorry, GFS and ECMWF agreeing pretty tightly here on the overall trends for the next couple of weeks. Uh, again, we'll have to keep a very close eye on that run up to Christmas. Not only is there the possibility of wintry weather, a cold spell, uh, that's what some of the longer term weather patterns are suggesting or saying is possible, but of course it's Christmas, so a lot of people are interested in what the weather's going to be like, uh, interesting if the weather's going to snow, be a white Christmas, and of course for travel as well as people will be having gatherings and stuff like that, so it is going to be a, a very close watch, but for all I can say at this stage is there is the possibility of wintry weather, probably above average compared to most years, but at this stage, we've got no major definitive signal that it is going to be cold. It just looks a possibility and more than uh, more than it has been in the past few years, at least. So we'll keep uh, a very close eye on it, keep you up to date with what is going on. But at this stage, uh, no, as I said, no massive signal uh, just for the next sort of week or so. It's going to be unsettled and then it's going to turn colder, but drier also. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.